Are you in there, Jack? Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a recipe for you, but it's a little bit different because I have never made it before. And this is something I'm trying for the first time and I wanted to kind of take you guys along with me. So ever since I put out my protein bagel recipe, which might actually be my most popular recipe ever, people have asked me, can I use the dough to do this? Can I use the dough to do that? People have asked things about bread rolls and pizza dough and recently pretzels. I posted this tray of beautiful pretzels that I made at the beginning of quarantine. And everybody was like, oh my God, give me the protein pretzel recipe. And I was like, those were not protein pretzels. Those were just regular big soft pretzels. And they were amazing, but there was nothing macro friendly or particularly healthy or nutritious about them. So I decided I wanted to try and make a more macro friendly soft pretzel recipe. Pretzels are similar to bagels in that they are boiled and then baked. So we're going to give it a shot. I'm taking my bagel recipe, I'm taking my pretzel recipe, and I'm trying to join them together in a way that makes the most sense. So here we go. I'm going to start with my stand mixer here, and I'm going to add one and a quarter cup of hot water. So this is around 110 degrees. You don't want it to be much hotter than that because it can kill the yeast. Yeast is incredibly hard to come by right now. I almost feel like I'm flexing on you guys in this video with all of my yeast and flour, but I had it because I cook a lot. So I had a lot of this stuff before the quarantine started. I'm going to use brown sugar in this as opposed to the white sugar that I use in the bagel recipes. Now you could use any kind of sugar. You could use turbinado sugar. You could use coconut sugar. You can use whatever you want, but there needs to be some kind of sugar in here for the yeast to eat and activate and become alive and bubbly and frothy. So that's what we have in there right now. Hot water, yeast, and sugar. And I'm just gonna whip this with my balloon attachment in my stand mixer here, just until it's well mixed. And then I'm gonna let it sit until it gets frothy. So I hope that everyone's quarantine is going well. We have been quarantining here since March. We have made so many kitchen experiments. Not all of them have been really macro friendly, which is why I haven't shown a lot of them, but I have been making sourdough bread because I can't find yeast. And once that's gone, we're out. And sourdough is super, super fun. Been doing that very frequently. We made sauerkraut, kombucha, brewed beer, made homemade cheese. We have a full garden in the back. It has been very projecty. What have you guys been doing? Tell me in the comments down below. Okay, so that is kind of bubbling and frothing. So now it's time to add our flour and I have all purpose flour and vital wheat gluten flour. Now in the bagel recipe, it's 50-50 flour and vital wheat gluten. And I love those bagels, but they're a little bit finicky. Sometimes you bake them and they look great. And then as they cool, they like fall super flat. And that's just kind of how gluten is sometimes. So what I'm going to try today is I'm gonna try to do 60-40 white flour, gluten. And you can play with different amounts. There's no, it has to be this way or it's going to come out wrong. Just know that if you play with the ratios here, you're going to change the macros and you're also going to change the texture a bit. So let's do the white flour. We are going to do 288 grams of white flour. So I put the bowl on the scale and then I just tear it out. Okay, perfect. And now I'm going to tear the scale again. And now I'm going to add my vital wheat gluten, which is a hundred. 192 grams. And if you don't have a food scale, you can kind of get as close as you can knowing that one cup is 120 grams. There we go. Perfect. And now I am going to add three teaspoons of salt, which is more salt than in the bagel recipe. Okay. And two tablespoons of oil. You could also do melted earth balance, but I have oil. So I'm doing two tablespoons here. Pretzels tend to be a bit more decadent than bagels in their macros. In fact, a lot of the recipes I came across called for almost no liquid and just called for butter. So this is actually a really good step in the right direction. <laughs> I'm gonna put the dough hook on here and I'm gonna let this sucker go for eight minutes. Be right back. Okay, it has been eight minutes. You can see the dough is totally pulled away from the sides. It's one big cohesive piece. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this with a piece of saran wrap and I'm gonna set it aside to rise for two hours. You see how like little it looks in that bowl right now? It should puff up quite a bit. So be back in two hours. All right, it is two hours later. Let's take a look at our dough. Ta-da, do you see how full that is? Okay, so I'm gonna turn this out onto a lightly floured surface. It shouldn't be too sticky, but still a little bit of flour. And I'm gonna try to roll this out into a rectangle. So it's very puffy. First, I'm gonna try to press it out to the sides. It feels quite elastic -y. Let's just flip it over. I'm gonna use my rolling pin and just try to get it to be as rectangular as I can because we're gonna be trying to cut this into strips. Pro tip, if your cutting board is wiggling all around like this, you can put a towel down underneath it, put the cutting board on top of it, and then it won't move. Ta-da. Okay, so this is definitely uh, harder to work with than regular pretzel dough which is very soft and cooperative. Gluten-y dough, less so, but we're still gonna make it work. And we're trying to get it rectangular. It's not looking very rectangular because we're gonna cut it into strips as best as we can. Maybe we'll do a couple pretzel buns as well. How's that sound? We're gonna cut them this way. Here we go. So you can see that is not a rectangle, but it's as close as I can get. So I'm gonna be cutting them the long way, and I wanna to try to make about one inch strips here. And if there's anything super wonky, set it off to the side. We'll make pretzel buns or pretzel bites. Fun fact, Giacomo takes these knives to a knife sharpener, and I still don't think they're very sharp. That's my hot take on that. Let's see how many of these we get. So we're gonna form these into pretzels and pretzel buns in just a second, but I want to show you the pot of water that I have cooking for them right now. So this is just a pot of water and we are gonna add a quarter cup of baking soda to that water and we're gonna let it come to a simmer. Okay, so the baking soda in the water, back in the day they used to use lye in the water, but it turns out that's kind of dangerous and caustic to human hands and things. So baking soda kind of mimics it, but it's much, much weaker. Okay, so let's start with the biggest snakes here. We're gonna take them and we're gonna roll them out into snakes. So I have four big ones, three little ones, and maybe three pretzel buns. We will see how those turn out. Okay, and I'd say that's about 16 inches long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the two ends, I'm gonna cross them once, and then I'm gonna twist them again. Then I'm gonna take it and fold it over on itself and press it. Let's get you closer so you can see what we're doing. at the way the little twists are turning out. I think that these are gonna be similar to the bagels in that if you've ever made the bagels, you know that they don't have a great hole. Sometimes the hole completely closes when they're baking and that's fine, they still taste great, they still taste like bagels. But I assume that the shapes of these pretzels are probably going to be kind of weird like that. And if they start to pull away, you can always dab a little water underneath them and I'll probably do that on these as well. Like you use a little water as glue to glue the ends down. So we'll do one more big one. I actually don't know what exactly what I'm gonna do with these small ones because I don't think we're gonna be able to make a real pretzel shape out of that. Maybe we'll just do a couple twists. I'm gonna do two, try to make them about the same length, and then I am just going to twist them, okay? That is 100% not going to stay. Look at it, they're like alive, do you see that? That's what gluten does, that spring, that's gluten. 
All right, well, we'll do what we can here. How about we try this instead? What if I just cut it not all the way through? If you guys ever wanna see more experimental uh, videos with me, let me know. So this one I didn't cut all the way through, and I gotta try twisting it here. We may have better luck with this, maybe. If any of these come out, I'm gonna be shocked. And now uh, pretzel buns, I'm just gonna try to shape these into a little bun. I have a feeling these are probably gonna come out the best out of everything. Now the bagels I let do a second rise, but I don't do that with my regular pretzels, so I'm going to, I think, not do that with these ones. I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop them in the pot for about 15, 20 seconds or so, and then put them on a baking sheet. All right, so here we have it. So I'm gonna take these over to the stove, and uh, we're gonna see how this goes. That one's definitely not going to work. I can already tell. Okay. Okay, so if I had pretzel salt, this would be the time to add them. But I don't have pretzel salt, but I do have everything but the bagel seasoning. So while they're wet, let's put a little bit on some of these pretzel buns and maybe on one of these pretzels just to try it out. With the bagels, you would kind of press the wet bagel into a plate of this stuff, but you know, put them on the hot dog buns too. Can you ever have enough everything but the bagel seasoning? You can't. Okay, that actually took a while to preheat. Probably should have preheated it a bit sooner. But these are gonna go in the oven right now for 10 minutes. Let's see what happens. Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> okay guys, moment of truth. 10 minutes is up, here we go. <laughs> All right, hang on, I'm gonna take you off this so that you can see what I see. All right, so you know what? Once I slice those, those actually are gonna be hot dog buns. Pretzel buns, our wreath, okay. Definitely the winner. Winner, winner, tofu dinner. And now our actual pretzels. So as I suspected, the holes are more or less gone here. We got a nice color on these for only being in there for 10 minutes, and that's because of the baking soda in the mixture. Probably wait a few minutes, but I wanna try one. Okay, so we have Giacomo with us now. He has a saying about all things come out of the oven and what is that? Impatience is rewarded. Yeah, so he's gonna try these with us. I am a big mustard fan. We're gonna try it with some mustard. Which one do you wanna try? How about that one right there? That's a pretzel bun, no. Ah, okay. There's okay. only one right answer and it's the, <laughs> <laughs> it's the everything pretzel. So I can already tell these will deflate a little bit as they cool, but I think they're still going to be delicious, so. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm at a baseball game. It's that good. Okay, Giacomo thinks everything tastes good, so now I'm gonna try it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's really good. Okay, so they definitely have a little bit more stretch to them than a regular pretzel. They're very hot. Very good. Not quite as much like sturdiness to them as regular pretzels, but they still have that coating on the outside that I absolutely love from that being boiled. Maybe I would cook them for like one minute longer. I think they're really good. Oh yeah. And the braids and the twists definitely won the game, for sure, in terms of the way they look. Do I get to eat more or do I just stand here? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I wanna eat. What else are we doing? All the things. So if you got 12 pretzels out of this or 12 things out of it, each serving would be 125 calories, 16.6 .6 carbohydrates, 11.1 .1 protein, and 1.8 fat. And I know a lot of you guys always ask us, why don't you write out the recipe? We do actually write out the recipe. We write it out on our membership site, which is the Vegan Proteins Academy. So we give you guys these YouTube videos, but we upload all of our recipes, way more than our own YouTube, in our academy. And that also makes people a part of our community. We give them workouts every month. We do live Zoom calls every month. It's pretty sweet. So if you wanna check that out, all the recipes are written. You can even plug them into a meal planner and generate a shopping list and stuff like that. We'll put it in the link down below. So hope you guys are doing good and we'll see you soon.